so George of the Jungle, the film that I I guess it could you could arguably say that it um, it continued uh, Brendan Fraser's career after oh yeah uh, after Encino Man or no like even after like after Encino Man or after The Mummy like that was during like it was done during the height of Brendan Fraser's career like and it was definitely I remember it was absolutely a big movie and you know honestly I have seen almost like I think I, I could say that I've seen all or almost all the, the movies based on J. War cartoons. George of the Jungle, I would say, is probably one of the best. Like, <laughs> at the very least, maybe right up there with Mr. Peabody and Sherman. That may not be saying a lot, but at least it's something. Um, the, like, you know, it, it, like, it knows what it's doing. And I think that's what makes it work is that it's a good like it's they know that george of the jungle is a goofy comedy and like and that that that's exactly what it is like it's a goofy comedy with a lot of cartoon antics and mm-hmm. like i think that and like it, it really like looking back at it like it really did put pu- like push the cartoon like the cartoony aspect of um what of what the original cartoon of what the uh, the original animated series had and um like I, like i remember like the best one of the best examples could be that um when george when uh, george was fighting that lion <laughs> and like suddenly you hear all these goofy sound effects and stuff like that like i don't know like I'm sure, like, a lot of people would have flaws with it. Like, I don't I don't really recall the ma- the massive issues that people would have with this movie, but, like, you know, at the least, it would probably be kind of harmless. Like, really, like, why would you go out of your way to really hate something like George of the Jungle? Because there, there are definitely worse things out there, like, even worse things done by Brendan Fraser. Oh, yeah, they... I don't even I don't know anybody who really complains about that movie or complained duh about it. You know, the only the only criticism that I ever remember hearing about it was the fact that um and and this was back around the sa- around the time that it was actually released. Uh you know, one of the one of the kids that uh went to go see it same age as me, or give or take, at the time, um, actually complained about um, a lot of the self-aware humor. I notice really? maybe that's a maybe that's a, a common thing with uh, with J Ward all to, oh, all no, together. Absolutely. No, no, no. Absolutely. Like a lot of it is self-aware, uh, silly humor. Yeah, it's, well, like, it's, it, uh... it's kind of a signature thing. Like you can even see it in many of its other works. Like the one thing I will say that, um, like the best thing, like the one thing I know is that no matter what, like this is absolutely better than another uh, live action movie starring Brendan Fraser that is based on, um, like that is based on a J War. Another J War cartoon was. Um, Dudley Do Right. I remember that one kind of sucked. It was trying to do the same thing, uh, essentially. It... But I think that one was released uh, before George of the Jungle, though. I think. No, no, no. It. Uh, I remember the advertisements for that very, very distinctly. Trust me, I was. I. Uh, or maybe that was yeah, at a. Right. That that was at a. A, a time in my life when I was religiously watching movie trailers online because, oh my god, you get to watch a movie trailer online? And it's in high quality? Yeah, it came out two years after George of the Jungle. So that, I was sort of, uh, I was sort of eating that up just like, okay, I don't have television yet, but my goodness, I'm going to rewatch this ad over time and time over, and it specifically said, 
From the creator of George the Jungle, and the star of George of the Jungle, and the acclaimed director, who saw George of the Jungle? Okay. Yeah, I do. And they were so okay. proud of this that they set put that in all the ads. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, because I remember. Um, no, nah, because it is true. Because technically, I do remember there was at one point in that Dudley Do Right movie that they legit made a reference to Pokemon cards. And you know that there is actually another connection between George of the Jungle and uh, Dudley Do Right is that they actually feature a sidekick character that was played by a Monty Python performer. Like, in George's Jungle, it was John Cleese, and in Dudley do Right, it was Eric Idle. Mm. Oh, yeah. I had, I had not... I had not previously made that connection. Like, there are a lot... There are surprisingly a lot of connection between those two. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, still, I think... I think with whatever was going on with George of the Jungle, um, we meant we previously mentioned the the self-aware humor. It it got to the point where it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't grating. It was just enough. I mean, I because I remember you know, there's gags in there where some of the thugs are actually in a shouting match with the narrator. Yeah, uh, oh, but okay. one of my. Yeah. <laughs> but it gave it gave us one of the one of the best fourth wall jokes I've ever yeah. seen in in a movie. Yeah. Oh, what is which, it? Which uh, which happens ironically right after we have a doo doo kaka joke. Yes. Oh, I think I know the one part where the guys look into the camera after. After Lyle face plants into some, into a pile of dung, and they say, "This is the part where we all throw our heads yeah. back and laugh." Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, well, that was George of the Jungle. Yeah. Yeah, that's George of the Jungle. <laughs> oh yes. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. That's like legit making a comeback now. Uh. <laughs> now this is the part we throw our heads back. And laugh. Ready? Ready! Oh, <laughs> uh, that was a that was a thing of beauty right there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It was just, ah. it was just interesting that it was released in ninety seven and it was Disney and yet two years later Disney did their own version of Tarzan. Well, you you can't yeah. uh, you can't really hold back like the uh, doing anything like the original material. Yeah. Well, I honestly, guess. honestly, no. The bigger irony when it comes to that Tarzan movie, like, was that how nine how like five years before that Tarzan movie, they would release the Jungle Book, which would surprisingly have a very similar plot. Where it's no longer the Jungle Book, it's Tarzan. Down, like, and it's almost frightening how that Jungle Book movie has so many parallels to um, to Tarzan. Down to the point that there's even legitimately a scene where um, like the, the woman character is trying to teach Mowgli how to become like a civilized human being. And they do the exact same steps. Like they show... Like, they show him slides, like, they show him, like, they do, like, the words thing. Like, it's almost the same pattern. Like, when I was watching it, I, like, I keep try I keep holding myself back from making any Phil Collins joke because I know I can't because it was released in 1994. Mm-hmm. And that's, welcome to the Disney's 90s fish out of water formula. <laughs> yes. We can't quite get enough of it now, can we? It's the most common thing to do. Oh, yeah. No, but it's, like, so... No, but honestly, I just find it so weird how they would make... Like, how they would make the Jungle Book that has the plot of Tarzan, and then they would actually make Tarzan. And in between, they'll make a, a story that, uh, that pokes fun at Tarzan. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, we're just getting... 
We're just getting Tarzan up in the uh, in the nineties here, because that's what we're that's what we are. We're Disney. Yes. And. Uh... All the power to be strong. I, rem- I guess back to George of the Jungle though. Uh, the only other uh, the only other thing that I can really uh, say about it, I remember reading reading up on it, and I think around the uh, around the time of the film, Disney Adventures magazine had their little tie-in and whatnot. Of course, me being the kid at the time, had to read that, and. We read uh, one of the little trivia factoids I learned in the magazine was, uh, of course, Brendan Fraser had to work out for the role. Well, yeah. But uh... they had they had a gym for him right on the set, and they actually called it George's Jungle Gym. Wow, really? This was the the clever. This was the clever bit of naming that they did there actually you know come to think of it i just realized something that i think i might have actually seen one of the sets in george of the jungle believe it or not i remember back when i um when i was like it was probably the late 90s or the really early 2000s i was at walt disney world and like they still had the um the tour, you know, the uh, back backlot stage tour. Mm-hmm. Oh, I nice. Guess, uh, yeah, yeah, and I remember there was that one part, like we actually see one of the sets where it's like a jungle setting from George of the Jungle, and they even included an like one of the animatronics of, or I think it's like a replica or something like that of jo- of George's pet elephant. Mm. Oh. Yeah, there's one, there's one aspect of the film that uh, we're not sure has has quite aged well as bad CGI elephant. Oh yeah, <laughs> but I, I can't well, believe I, I, it. Isn't actually, it like isn't it like a mix of everything? Like they had a real elephant and then an animatronic elephant and then yeah, a CGI elephant. Yeah, it was a mix of everything. Yeah. But you can tell when it's CGI pops up. It's just like, oh, who's it gonna do, puppy? Who's it gonna do, puppy? <laughs> Oh yeah! Thank you, Dino. <laughs> it's just uh, yeah. But then, then they had to make a sequel, George of the Jungle Two. Oh God, I did not watch that one. Thank fucking God. Which Brendan Fraser wisely stayed out of, but the for the funniest reason. For what? They. They weren't paying him high enough. That's the joke. Really? In the movie. That's the joke. That's the joke in the movie. That is a joke in the movie. That's the joke in the movie. That's why. That's the because the narrates narrates the beginning of it, and all of a sudden he looks at George like, "Wait, you're you're not George." And it's like, and the new person playing George says, it's "Like they're not paying Brandon Fraser enough." So that's why he didn't come back. That's not. That's that's just a joke in the movie. It's not just a joke in the movie. It was it was reported around the time of the movie's release. Sure. He, but... he yeah, that was a real thing. He wanted a he wanted a a pay hike, like twelve point five million dollars, and they're like, wait a minute, this is going direct to video. But, 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 but I'm reading is, Brandon Fraser says he has no idea why Disney didn't offer him to reprise his role, George. He said he would have loved to do it again. But he made a commitment of performing the lead role in Looney Tunes back in action instead. Oh, right. So, wait, where are you reading this? IMDb. IMDb. Uh, that's not what I read around the time of the film's release. I can tell you that. Uh, well, you never know. You hear a lot of stories, so. I think it's, uh, be- I think it's better, too, because in the movie, he has a kid named Junior. And he's reading Tarzan. It's as though we're we're acknowledging the spoof material here. Yeah, it's like Austin Powers watching a James Bond movie. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Or James Bond watching an Austin Powers movie. Oh no no no! You know, actually, the best example, and this is something that legit happened, was that 
um, there was a recent Batman comic, I think it's a part of the New 52 series, where Batman picked up a pin, and it was one of the Watchmen pins. No joke, man. That actually exists. You could look it up. I'll put this in the, the same collection that I have the, that I put the baby doll in. <laughs> oh, actually, James, like I don't know if we're still doing the uh, cinema lounge, but like there's something I want to ask you actually regarding a new mm. con- like a new controversy if you have heard about it. Hmm. I don't know. It, it, like, it, is it okay to go sidetrack for this it's cinema fine. lounge? Or... It's, it's fine. It's fine? It's okay. fine. Okay, James, just add... Okay, James, did you hear about the recent controversy about the killing joke? What about it? In the new killing joke. Okay, because the thing is, is that... You, because the thing is that they really want to extend Barbara Gordon's character. Because, you know, the comic is not long enough to make an entire feature film. So like oh, they yeah. want to like really emphasize Barbara Gordon's character so that when the scene happens like it'll be really effective. Mm-hmm. One decision that people see that one one decision however that got leaked and everybody is so pissed off about it they're going to include a sex scene with Batman. No joke. Do you want me to repeat that for you? <laughs> Nice and slow. To be honest with you, he's gonna pull his comic out. Let me close the door. Okay. If the word doesn't get out, <laughs> to be honest with you, I, at the very worst, what I was anticipating was a scene including the uh, the infamous photographs, perhaps one of uh, the Joker actually raping her in the process but you what you mentioned there kind of comes a little close <laughs> she wants the d to be fair <laughs> I mean, yeah. no there's legit a scene it's like from the clip that i saw is that barbara was on top of batman they were making out with each other and then like she stood up she took off her mask and then took off her entire shirt so that you only see her like just with her bra on and then getting back down to Batman. There, That's not quite enough for an R rating. Well, no. I mean, like, the R rating would come with, like... Like, it, it, like the R rating, it didn't say, like, nudity and stuff like that. It says, like, disturbing imagery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've heard about that. Yeah. Uh... But no, it's more the fact of how it's more of the like the controversy is not really the sex scene itself. It's more the fact that they're really pushing the the relationship between Batman and Batgirl down to the point that like they're not just partners, like they're they're now like uh, bang buddies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I don't know, they've done uh, they've they've done it so uh, they've done it with uh, it seems like so many so many different routes with the character you know Batman's had Catwoman Talia al Ghul why not Batgirl yeah I've heard that but the thing is I did hear that like they did it before in a comic called Batman Beyond and that did not work out as well so I, I don't know hmm uh, it it may it may or may not work. I don't know. I feel like that's really pushing it to make uh, that that's really pushing it. I feel like I, I don't know. I feel like it would be missing the point, like of for the story. like not just the story, but for the character of Barbara Gordon herself. Like when that sex scene occurred, I was mostly thinking about Batman himself. Uh, like, I was just thinking, like, if Batman saw Barbara Gordon, like, if Batman found out that Barbara Gordon got shot, like, the only thing Batman would have on his mind is, like, now where will I get the pussy? He'll have to go to bed, pussy. (laughs) Oh, God. I need to get laid. Wait, I know a pussy. Catwoman, go to bed. 
Cat hooker. No, 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 no. Well, it is Bruce Wayne after all. He's got the money. Uh, yeah. Actually, that that is something that is something that surprisingly has also has also been a thing. I mean, I'm what, I'm right now playing. I'm right now playing as we've been talking here. I'm I'm playing Arkham Knight. Oh, okay. Surprise, surprise. He's multitasking. I'm multitasking. Talking about George the Jungle, Tarzan, Batman, and uh, and a side of and a side of Space Jam. So. Uh... <laughs> a side of slam. If you want a jam. <laughs> So, I'm a ma- I'm an extraordinary man who does extraordinary things, I guess. But in all seriousness, um, yeah, there's a subplot. Is that a timer? Yep. Jungle boy. Tarzan boy. Junk buggy. Oh, that's not so bad. Okay. Yeah, that was a timer, by the way. I t- I just you guys started talking. I was like, I better just start the timer, just whenever. So I just did 15 minutes. So. Mhm. It was some short, short little thing. It's fine. So it was good. It's a good little warm up for the vocals. Mhm. So James, are you going to be the completionist and finish the game completely, 100%? I will complete it as much as I can, but there is a subplot in which you, uh, uh, the Riddler has uh, has Catwoman uh, with a with a bomb collar on her, and you have to you basically have to team up with her and do a bunch of a bunch of different puzzles in order to break the collar off of her. So once that's finally done, she comes out and says, "Well, now that I'm free, I know a, a couple of I know a couple of museums that have that have very poor security, but I also know a couple of hotels." Ah, well, the funny thing well, is that. Like, Sorry, I've got my work to do tonight. <laughs> Crime first, pussy second. <laughs> hey, that—that's how you. That's what you do at the end of a hard day's work, you know. Yeah, no, but the thing is, like, at least with Cat, like, I knew that Batman and Catwoman were a thing. Like, I remember, even in the, um, uh, the like the Adam West series, like that was a, you know, that that was a massive thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And Batman Returns, of course. There's a lot of stuff coming. Uh, out. That seems like, uh, yeah, that that seems like uh, the the biggest favorite fan pairing right there. Batman and Catwoman, or Batman and Batgirl. Catwoman. Catwoman. Oh yeah. No, I think the, what, what the Batgirl, that's, that's new, because i never seen that. The new thing with Batgirl is, uh, from what I've seen, actually, is that in some cases, she's actually, she's even a lesbian now. Really? No, she's oh, dating other the, women. There was, um, who am I thinking of? There's, there's, there's one pairing of lesbians in the DC universe, in the Batman universe. What the hell am I thinking of? Uh, oh, Poison Ivy, uh, Poison Ivy, and Harley Quinn. Yeah, thank you. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. So those I've two. Heard, yeah. Those yeah, two. yeah. I've heard like those two. Yeah. Like that is a fan thing that they try to make that a thing. Yeah. That's a oh, so that's a fan thing. It's no, 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 no. It's like kind of an official thing, but it's like a fan favorite thing. Yeah. Oh, a fan favorite. Okay. Yeah. 
I've seen that like in comics yeah. where Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn are just like, mm -hmm. yeah. You know what? <laughs> to be honest, she probably she probably would be a lot happier with uh, with Poison Ivy. Yeah. Because when has when has the Joker ever genuinely been nice to her? I remember. I remember on Twitter, I saw there was this picture of, uh, like, Tara Strong, like, since she's, like, the signature voice of Harley Quinn, she actually posted this picture of Harley, of, uh, Harley Quinn, and, like, she had this weird creeper face, and she was holding, a, like, this plate, and it had the Joker's head on it, and, like, I was there, I was like, oh, it's another Harley Quinn thing, yes! <laughs> Like, I remember I even responded, like, with a gif of uh, Kramer from Seinfeld, just like, just like... <sighs> mm -hmm. Like, that was free. It's like, and I remember someone commented, it's like, I was like, well, Harley Quinn is no longer taking the Joker's crap. I was like, damn, still, man, she has freaking Joker's head on the, in her hands <laughs> while making this weird... Cre like, Hold on, maybe I could find it actually. Yeah, I've been reading up on, I've been doing my research on on Batman for the next uh, from pages to pictures. My goodness, they, with the, I, there's probably a reason why I'm not di as disturbed by the Killing Joke as I could be. Ew. Yeah. See what I mean? Because of stuff like that. And this is the proper reaction. <laughs> I was like, oh. But you get what I mean? It's like you got this massive creeper face from Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, it's like, what the fridge? Well, there's other stories. Yeah, there's other official stories, actually, where... Um... At, at one point, uh, Joker actually cuts his own face off and then mm -hmm. and then sews it back on just for the sake of being a masochist. Mm -hmm. There's another oh, yeah. story. I think There's like... another story yeah. where he he becomes sort of a demigod and and punishes Batman by killing killing him and bringing him back to life every single day for the. So, I, uh, I, I, I think we've, I think we've, um, I think we've pushed the, the limits far enough as far as what we can do there. Yeah. I think I remember, I think I know which comic, well, I don't know, I don't remember the name, but I'm, I, I think I know which comic you're talking about in terms of, like, the Joker's mask pulling off because I remember at the DVD store that like near my place, they actually sell a special edition of that comic where you can also get uh, that uh, that mask of the Joker, like literally of his like of his like severed face and like reattached. Because mm. huh. you'd really want that, right? Sure, it's just put that on for it's Halloween, a... like, boo! It makes a nice collector's item. Tweak or tweet! <laughs> Bong! Yeah, it makes a great ma- You know, it makes a wonderful mask when you go out and kidnap Sandy Claus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Uh, what, ca what can we do next? Oh, yeah. Let's do. Let's start the episode. Yes. Oh yeah. I wanted to. <laughs> the uh, reason why we are here. You are gathered here, my disciples, to talk about the Lord that is Tarzan. The Lord that is Tarzan. Lord of the Apes, Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> mhm. Mm I kill myself. Um. So there is two '90s movies and one '80s movie. So I was thinking. Matt. We're going backwards, so I'll go with the Disney from 99, mine is from, like, 97, I gotta double-check the year, and then 
James is like the oldest one of the bunch, so I figured we go backwards. You know, me, uh, Matt, me, and James. Mm hmm. Yeah, save me for last, please. I finished the. I finished the ice cream challenge last anyway, so. Mm. so of course. But I will get my revenge with the cookie. Oh, man. Cookie face challenge. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So... And I have cookies, actually. We got animal crackers now. Oh, boy. I need a I need an actual cookie. I need a cookie, okay? You need a cookie to put on your forehead. Not an animal cracker. You put a cookie on your head. Yeah, but an animal cracker is no. like a cookie. It's no. a it's like a cookie no, with a no, little shape. No, it's not. You gotta have a it's... cookie. You got, that's a cracker. You have gotta put a cookie on. It's gotta be a round. So... It's gotta be a round circular cookie. Okay. And you put, oh. it, put it on your forehead and you try to inch it down to your mouth. So if do, you drop it, do you put it back in your forehead? For our challenge, I think. I mean, if you drop it, I think it's. You're out. I think. I don't think uh -huh. we're. I think we're just doing a, a quickie where it's just like, let's see who can do it, you know, and then they win. It's not like a time <laughs> frame. It's just like, go do it, see who wins. Well, if if we're doing like from first to last, then we kind of have to do the. Um... Like, I think it would be, like, we kind of have to do the, you know, who's on, who's got to go first, who's got to go last, and stuff like that. Because that way, when we, like, that way at least we'll know, you know? That's true. That's true. I can definitely tweak it, you know, where, because I'm just like, of course, Devin wanted to be, like, short and sweet, where you could just see who can do it, you know, do it to the mouth first, and you know whoever drops out is like last, third, second, first kind of thing. Or... Yeah, exactly. Like because there, I know this is going to be a challenge where, um, like you're like more than one person is going to drop their cookie. Yeah, and I was I was <laughs> That's thinking, I was thinking about that too, and I was thinking if they drop it, they're definitely out. But the way I originally wanted to do is that I would time it, and they would have so many attempts to, to keep going until they try it, I guess, or something similar to that. Yep. I don't know, I guess, I guess if you do drop it, you, you can pick it up and try it again. You know? Well, you have to put it back in the same position, though. Yeah, right. That's the catch. Right, right. That, that, like, it's just a, it's like a reset button. It's like if you drop it, you reset and try it over and over until you do. Mm -hmm. You can't no. just put it back like where your nose was. Right. Exactly. You know, that's probably a better idea because it's, it's like if you, if I had it where you dropped it, you just lose. That just isn't fair, I guess. I guess if you keep trying and trying, it'd be better. Yeah, I think that'll be, but that won't be for a while, because I know we won't be doing it. I don't think I'm going to do that next week, because I know we're going to be busy next weekend, especially Con Bravo for Matt. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I won't even be here. So. Are yeah. they, they're, they're paying you, or they're paying no, you? No, 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 no. No, they're not really paying me. It's just, like, I'm going there by my own terms. Oh, well, okay, oh so well, these aren't the guys okay. that invited you. Yeah, they invited me. Like, they did invite me, and technically, like, I, I, I don't have to pay for my uh, ticket to Con Bravo. Oh, so it's like a press pass. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. It, it, it is like a press pass. And, like, I am going to do, like, the panels and stuff like that. And, like, I even was invited to many of, like, uh, many of the other panels. So, like, I'm going to, like, um, sell up, like, a Cards Against Humanity one. Like, and I think there's another one that I got invited to that I'm going to do, like, like, did you hear about, uh, what, what was it? It was, um, like, Brental Floss's new game that's a bit like Cards Against Humanity, but it's, like, on TV, or, like, on your screen, and you have to use your phone. Mm. You haven't heard of that one? No. Okay, well, I'm doing something like that. 
Well, like I'm doing Brental Boss's game. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, well, I think. Yeah, you'll, I don't know, we'll see. You'll find out. Yeah. You will find out. Yee. 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 You believe you do. That's all, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all, folks.